What's up guys, so today I'm going to go over my favorite coaster from each manufacturer. And to be honest, I was not quite ready to do a video like this, but I've gotten quite a few requests for this kind of video, specifically on this topic about manufacturers and everything. So I figured I might as well just give it a shot and maybe a few years down the road I'll do another video like this and kind of update what my favorite are from each manufacturer. So let's get right to it. Let's start off with a few defunct manufacturers first. Let's start off with the old classic Aerodynamics. It was a little bit hard for me to pick on this one because Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg has always been a nostalgic ride for me and it's always been one of my favorite Aerodynamics coasters as well. However, I was just at Six Flags Magic Mountain this past February and I got my very first ride on X2. Now I know this is originally an aerodynamics coaster and then SNS came in and built new trains for it. However, I still consider it an aerodynamics coaster and I'm sure many other coaster enthusiasts do as well. So I am choosing X2 as my favorite ride from aerodynamics. So it's not too often that I laugh uncontrollably on a ride, but this is one ride that does it for me. I think I got three, maybe four rides. I can't remember on this ride, but every single time I rode this ride I was laughing uncontrollably and it's just a sensation that you don't get on many types of rides. The only thing that's kind of similar to it is a 4D free spin from SNS, but this is a controlled spin, it's not a free spin. But everything about this ride was just so much fun and this is by far my favorite ride from Aerodynamics. Up next let's do Schwarzkopf. I know a lot of people call it Schwarzkopf or something like that, but I know it's a German name and I speak German so I call it Schwarzkopf, but I'm just weird like that. Anyway, Schwarzkopf. I would say my favorite for this one is Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's Berry Farm. It's a short ride, simple, and right to the point, but in the short layout that it has, it's a very powerful ride, I'd say. The loop packs a punch, you pull some pretty decent Gs on it. I would say the best part of this ride is in the back row, when you're going backwards, going up the back spike. That really catches me off guard every single time I rode the thing, and I can't get enough of it. It's just a fun little ride. But this might change in a year or so, because I've not ridden Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas, nor Mindbender at Six Flags over Georgia. And I hear a lot of good things about those two rides, so once I get a ride in those, then this may change, but we'll have to wait and see. Up next will be CCI, or Custom Coasters International. So my favorite ride from this manufacturer, some people might call it a GCI, but I still consider it a CCI, and it would be Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. So some people may call this a GCI because GCI came in and retracted this thing and pretty much gave it new life and made it an amazing coaster. But I still see it as a CCI coaster, it still has the CCI layout, and Said, what was that? It's a CCI to me. But I gotta say, Ghost Rider is probably one of my favorite wooden coasters of all time. This thing is so much fun. I could ride this thing all day long and never get tired of it. It's one of my favorite night rides too, either in the front or the back. It's an amazing ride, no matter where you sit in this ride. I would say my favorite part of this ride is right after the mid-course brake run. Most of the times they're not running, so if it's not running and you're in the back row, you get a nice pop of ejector at time going down that hill after that little mid-course. And I still live by what I said in my last vlog at Knott's Berry Farm. i put that in right now. Time to trigger Josh. This is better than Phoenix. Whoa! Oi! Oh, no, no, no. You can't even compare to the air time on that thing. You can't even compare! Ghost Rider is better than Phoenix, Josh. No, it's not! I'm the your Phoenix ride home. Legend. You have to agree with me. No! And yeah, I gotta live by that. I think that Ghost Rider is just a better ride than Phoenix, and I'm sorry that I offends anybody, but... I'd take that back if I were you. I'm not taking that back. Ghost Rider's a better ride than you. I'm I sorry. I will watch you burn. Okay, yeah, I'm sure you totally will. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Stop burning my video! <laughs> Alright, now that I put the fire out that Phoenix started, on to the next manufacturer, which would be D.H. Morgan. So my favorite ride from D.H. Morgan, they didn't quite build it from ground up. They, it was kind of a renovation that they did, but my favorite ride from D.H. Morgan is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. So this originally opened as Steel Phantom that was built by Aerodynamics, mm -hmm. but there were so many complaints about the ride being so rough and beating the crap out of the people, Kennywood decided to let Morgan come in and kind of give it a makeover in a way. They got rid of all the inversions on it, now it's just a hyper coaster with a bunch of airtime, and I love everything about this ride. This ride is so much fun. And this is one of my favorite nighttime rides, like, ever. Especially the second drop going down into the valley at night. It is so dark, you cannot see anything at all and I love it. It's such a fun ride. All right, one more defunct manufacturer on this list and we'll move on to some manufacturers that are still around. Up oh, next would be Pinfari. No. All right, on more next. So, one honorable mention before we move on would be Gravity Group. I only make this an honorable mention only because I've not ridden anything yet from Gravity Group, so I'm hoping to get some Gravity Group rides sometime soon, but we'll just have to- Come on, Ryan, get with the times. All right, let's start with some smaller manufacturers. Manufacturers. <laughs> 
Let's start with Mauer rides first. So I haven't ridden too many rides from Mauer, but I would say my favorite from them would be Laugh Track at Hershey Park. I mean, it's just spinning wild mouse. It's just cool that it's indoors and the theming is kind of neat to it too. So that's the only reason why I picked that one. Up next would be Sam Parallel. And again, not too many rides that I've ridden from them, but if I had to pick one, I would pick Pony Express at Knott's Berry Farm. I mean, it's a cute little family coaster and it's not really much to it. The only cool thing about it that really stands out to me is that the fact that you're si as if you're sitting on a pony. And I've never ridden anything like that before, so it was kind of cool to experience that. But other than that, it's just a basic family coaster, and it's cool that it launches too. Up next is Mock Rides, and I know that this will change in the future because I have not had a chance to ride Manta at SeaWorld San Diego, Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, and Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. I'm really hoping to get down to Carowinds sometime this season, but the other two may have to wait a little bit longer. But as of right now, my favorite Mock Ride coaster will be Sierra Sidewinder. There's a lot of stuff in this list from Knott's Berry Farm, isn't there? But yeah, again, it's just another family coaster. It's a spinning wild mouse coaster. Nothing too special to it, but I don't have too many rides that I've ridden from Mock Rides besides some basic wild mouse coasters, and this is one that just stands out the most to me. But I'm, I'm pretty sure once I ride Time Traveler, Copperhead Strike, or Manta, that this is going to change pretty quickly. Up next would be Zero Rides, and I haven't ridden too many from them either, but an obvious favorite would be Fair Bolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And this is honestly a very solid replacement from Big Bad Wolf. I like that it's a multi launch coaster, it's partially indoors, partially outdoors, there's a free floor section, free floor section, free floor section, and the inside part. And it follows the same layout at the very end, taking the same path that Big Bad Wolf did at the very end of that ride. So they did a good tribute to Big Bad Wolf. All right, let's move on to some bigger manufacturer names now. Let's start with PTC or Philadelphia Debogging Company. I'm weary to say this because he almost burned me to death a few minutes ago, but my favorite ride from PTC is Phoenix at Knobles. So this is a very unassuming ride. I mean, you look at it at first glance, it doesn't look like it really would do much, but while it isn't the biggest airtime monster in the world, it just packs so much airtime in such a small layout and you just would not expect a coaster of this size to throw as much airtime to you as it does. Either in the front row or in the back row, you're gonna get a bunch of airtime no matter where you sit in this ride. So there, you happy Phoenix, you got something on this list. I guess I forgive you. Here's a little water to cool off the flames. Water. <laughs> Thank you. Was not expecting to get wet during production today, but here we are. Thanks, Phoenix. All right, up next on my list is Vacoma, and they got a lot of cool new stuff opening up in Europe, and I really hope that they start building those kind of things in America. Like their Bermuda Blitz coaster or the Space Warp coaster, they all look pretty cool, and it would be awesome if they start building some of these things in American parks, but only time would tell with that, really. But my favorite ride from Vacoma would be Expedition Everest at Animal Kingdom in Disney World. So what really makes this ride is the theming to it, and the theming is just phenomenal. I mean, they built an entire mountain, and you go inside of the mountain, and everything is well-themed, and Every little tiny detail is just so perfect with this ride. Given that it would open in 2006, it's still super smooth. Disney has taken great care of this ride. And I love how it goes backwards. It's a switch track and you go backwards uh, completely in the dark and you go forward again. For a family ride, it's kind of on the upper end of intensity, I would say. All right, up next is Gerslauer. And I've only ridden two rides from Gerslauer. Mystery Mine at Dollywood and then Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm. And maybe we've done to them giving Knott's Berry Farm yet another check on this list. <laughs> But Hang Time is definitely my favorite Gerslauer so far. But I do know that this will change pretty quickly once I get some more credits. I fell in love with this ride immediately. The holding brick at the top is a lot steeper than what it actually looks, and that really threw me off the very first time I rode the ride. The back row is just awesome going down that first dive. You get whipped so good on that. I love that. I love that it has lap bar restraints too. The only complaint I have about this ride is on the corkscrew, you get a weird, odd pop at the very crest of it. And I'm not sure why that happens, but every single time I've ridden a ride, I've noticed it. Other than that, it's still a super solid ride and I love it a lot. Up next would be GCI or Great Coasters International. And again, this is one that I know will be changing sometime in the near future because I've not ridden Mystic Timbers, Gold Striker, or Texas Stingray yet. But as of right now, my favorite GCI coaster would be Thunderhead at Dollywood. Now I actually rode this before my coaster enthusiast days. This was probably about seven years ago, maybe. And while I still enjoyed coasters, I didn't really know how to judge them as a coaster enthusiast so much, but from what I do remember from the ride, it was a lot of fun. Had some pretty decent airtime and some fun laterals to it. And I like how it has the station overpass like Apocalypse at Six Flags Magic Mountain. All right, up next would be Premier Rides, and this is a pretty easy pick for me. Would be West Coast Racers at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is new for 2019. 20. I got so many rides in this ride when I went there in February, at least 10 to 15 rides, and I never got sick of the ride. I had a blast on it every single time I went on it. And I like how it's always a guaranteed race too, so that just adds an extra fun element to the whole ride. The high five element at the very beginning is 
my personal favorite part, especially on the white track when you do the overbank turn into the high five element, you really get whipped in that thing like crazy. And I was not expecting that, so that really threw me off. And given my first ride on it ever was in the front row, and that was just amazing. And you can pull some pretty decent G's on the helixes too. Nothing crazy, but it's cool. Up next would be SNS, and I haven't ridden too many from them either, but my easy pick for this one would be Steel Curtain at Kennywood. This is such a weird and wonky ride, but that's what I like about it a lot. It looks like a Kinex coaster that somebody as a kid would build, and it's just cool to see something like that in real life. The hang time that you get on their first inversion is pretty nice, and on the stall you get some pretty decent hang time too, and all the inversions, it's pretty fun. Overall, super fun ride. As of right now, it has the most inversions in North America, and I think North America needs to catch up with Europe on the inversion game, because I think the Smiler at Alton Towers has 14 inversions, and America's only stuck at nine. Come on, America, catch up! All right, say the three big ones for last. We'll start with B&M, or Bollinger and Mabillard. Now, I know that this one will absolutely change in the very near future, because there's a lot of big ones that have not gotten the ride yet, like Diamondback, Fury 325, Raging Bull, Leviathan, and Cannamonium this year at Hershey Park. Hopefully that opens this year. I'll decide when it opens. Get out of here! Bye -bye. So as of right now, my favorite B&M ride is Mako at SeaWorld. And this was a very unassuming coaster for me, and I actually had not heard much of this ride when I rode it for the first time, and it blew me away immediately. The airtime that you get in this thing is insane. I mean, it's all floater airtime, but that's what B&M hypers are known for, but nothing wrong with some floater airtime, and you get a whole bunch of it on this ride. And the second half of it after the mid-course break run is kind of more like a twister layout in a way. So it's kind of cool how you get the typical B&M camelbacks for all the floater airtime, and then the second half you get a little bit of a twister layout with it. So. Overall, it's a very solid ride, and this is, as of right now, my number one favorite B&M coaster. All right, on to the next one, which would be Intamin. And this was very hard for me to pick. I had to choose between Intimidator 305 or Skyrush. After much thought and consideration, I have chosen Skyrush as my favorite Intamin coaster. Sorry, I-305. But Skyrush has one of the most brutally amazing first drops off of any coaster that I've ever been on. Especially in the back row. If you ride back row on the left wing seat, that is by far the best seat on this ride. I've ridden this ride over a hundred times, and there's only a small handful of times where I actually managed to keep my hands up on the first drop. That first drop, it gets me every single time. It's definitely one of the biggest oh moments that I've personally experienced on a coaster. And the Stengel dive towards the end of the ride, that's where the left wing seat in the back row really shines. That's definitely the best spot for that specific element. And I remember my first few rides on Skyrush. I remember going up the lift hill and just thinking, is this restraint going to keep me in? You have such an open feeling with that and almost feels like there's nothing keeping you in there. And I love that about the ride. That's a unique feeling and I don't know of any other coasters, at least no coasters that I've been on that kind of give that sensation. And yeah, I know a lot of people complain that it crushes your thighs a bit and it crushes mine a little bit too. But as I've said countless times, this doesn't really bother me. The rest of the ride is just so awesome that I easily overlook this tiny little issue. So if you're a coaster enthusiast and if you have not ridden Skyrush, this is an absolute bucket list coaster that you have to try at least once. All right, on to the last manufacturer, which would be RMC, Rocky Mountain Construction. RMC has really changed the game for the whole coaster industry. It's made what people thought was impossible for coasters possible, and it's challenging other manufacturers to do things that they normally wouldn't do. And it's just really upped up the game for everybody, and I think in a way it's kind of started a second coaster war. But this won't come to a surprise to anybody, but my number one RMC coaster would be Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, and I think many people would agree with that too. I mean, this is just the god of coasters. It's as simple as that. Like seriously, have you been on this ride? Have you ridden this ride? You. Have you ridden this ride? Have you ridden this ride? You. Have you ridden this ride? I'm back. And the first drop on this ride, especially in the back row, is just as brutal as Skyrush's first drop, if not more brutally awesome. The overbank top hat and you get like five seconds of constant sustained ejector airtime is probably the most heavenly experience I've ever had on a ride. The pacing on this ride is so perfect, it's throwing one element after another element at you and it's a super long ride too, it just never ends and it takes full advantage of every foot of track in the layout. Well there you have it guys, those are my favorite coasters from each manufacturer, I guess as of April of 2020 and as I said, many of these coasters are going to change and I would say within a year over half of this list is going to be different. But I got so many requests to do this specific video, so I wanted to go ahead and do it and just put it out there and we'll touch base in about a year or so. 
So now I want to hear from you guys. Comment down below. I want to hear what some of you guys' favorite Rise Remix manufacturer is, and let's get some conversations going on. In the description down below, I'll put a list of every manufacturer that I mentioned in this video. All right, guys, I wrapped the video up here. I hope you enjoyed it. But before I go, I got some unsettled business to take care of with the little coronavirus here. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next loop. Phoenix, give me a hand burning this guy up. I've got your back on this one, Ryan. Let's like this. Bitch. That's right. Burn, baby, burn. Don't play with fire. Bye, guys.